thank you so much, guys. Boudreau and Rossico, ha, ah, <laughs> today at Drum Channel on uh, one of your only days off, by the way. From days off. Cavalia, day off which tonight. is the amazing show. If you looked a little bit before we started streaming live tonight, you saw Eric actually up in his little cubicle, about yep, 10 right. stories high <clears throat> above the amazing rink that you have there. What we're going to do today is uh, take some of the songs, one of the songs that you did there, and break down some of the parts from it. The one you just played, you wrote, right? Yeah, I did it. Very nice. Thank uh, you. Luis and Eric, by the way, they just don't go by their last names, but we thought that was a good name for the act tonight on Drum Channel. Well, good name. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when you um, take a look at, uh, tell people a little bit about the show, because it's amazing. If you haven't had a chance to see it, uh, it's been all around the United States. Uh, there's some amazing things that's going to be happening with the show. They sell out almost every place they're at, but in case they don't know, give them a little background of what they would see should they come to see the show. Well, it's, um, <clears throat> it's the biggest touring show in the world uh, because of the number of persons involved. The, we have horses. We have to count them. The big top is pretty, pretty big. And um, yeah, we do like, let's say 250 shows a year. Uh, touring all over the state, Canada and Mexico, and um, the show is doing pretty good right now. And um, we're here in California for another like a month, and after that we're gonna be in Scottsdale in Arizona, and we're gonna be back to Canada like in uh, at, in Winnipeg. But think of the scope. I think the, if the Rolling Stones, I think have about 60 trucks, semis. Yeah. You have like 110, 120, and something twice like as that. much as the biggest rock and roll show you'd ever see, kind of out there. Real, it's a lot of equipment. And when I say 10-story building, <coughs> I'm not exaggerating. The tent is about that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. For us, I think we're 23 feet. 20 stories. Uh, for us, I think it's 23 feet in the air. Wow. In, uh, in our studio. Uh, yeah. And you've been playing, both been playing the show for how long? I've been playing for four years now, so we've, we've played uh, around like over a thousand shows together all over the place. Um, yeah, so now we can, we can read each other even without seeing each other because while we play we're like 150 feet apart. So Eric is playing at the other end of the stage and I play at the other end. So we, we basically don't really see each other, but we have to uh, like put like a, a lot of attention on listening to each other and kind of predict of what, what we're going to play, uh, building tensions together. So even if we cannot see each other, we're, we're still really connected. <coughs> and uh, yeah, after playing that many shows uh, together, we, we created this, this connection that, uh, that we, can, we can share even if we're, we're apart, like far apart. You just use a word that comes up a lot here, and it's so important for all the students uh, that are watching, no matter what instrument they play, and that's how musicians are professional listeners. I can't give you the long list of people, but almost everybody that's been on Drum Channel, professional drummers, that's one of the things that they say is so important, besides just the beats and the fills and the things that you play. Um, and for you guys, uh, you're not only having to listen to each other, but, you know, <coughs> Does the show change from night to night? And I'm, I, the leading question, because I know the answer to it, because we've talked about it. Most shows, in my day, I've played a few, and I'm sure you know a lot of the drummers out there have played shows before, where it's pretty well set, unless something would happen to go wrong once in a while, uh, then you would have to react to it. But how much do you guys improvise? Every night is different. We, we have like that, that song, and in the song, we have to move that square in the song, you know, like a box, and it depends on the, some, some some song, like, you would have to improv, and some would be, like, I, I don't improv much, but, I mean, I'm doing different feels. Sometimes I will create tension and stuff, but um, we have to see what's going on on stage. So if one night there's something happening on stage, we have to uh, react quick. We don't have time for, like, thinking uh, what we're going to do. Mm. And before, uh, our musical director was giving more cues, but now you know us, like, how we're going to react, so it's much easier like easier in, in between us to create uh, like a, uh, whatever happened, like if some, like a horse get out of the stage backstage uh, and we need to keep grooving, we, we thought you will say the part, we know which part we're gonna do. Horses are involved in the entire show, by the way. <coughs> I think they- Yeah, so half, half acrobats, half horses. Which is, which is um, part of why you never know, they do the same routines, but they're not gonna do them the same every night. Uh, no. And you had mentioned sometimes if they do a little something, you have to direct the music almost to make it sound like that was part of the show. I noticed you did that when I went to see the show. I thought that was just brilliant. 
Uh, you took off and played a little bit. You played a little bit of a solo while one of the horses wasn't quite going the direction it was supposed to, and, and then it came back. Yeah, yeah. we uh, covered that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, like there, there's a lot of different uh, difficulties. Like uh, at first, um, like we're gonna play a, a song later, but uh, the seven four when you have to uh, improvise or like Eric in the action songs, uh, there's always horses and acrobat jumping everywhere. And he say he don't he, he doesn't improvise much, but it's not really true because he always punch symbols when somebody oh, yes. jump and all this, and he has to do this on time with us and at the same time be synchronized with the action on stage, which is like a like a a, a big challenge just just this to be able to really punch everything that is happening on stage while staying like really tight with the band that is like playing on click. So we have to, we play with, with the click on this the show. This is the hard part. So I think it's, 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 a, it's a, big, uh, a big challenge. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. like, I mean, I don't have the problem to play the beat. I'm just thinking where I'm going to punch in the beat, mm -hmm. you know, like it, before it sounds like musical for, because I, it, I can punch anywhere. Or, but sometimes I will wait a little bit. Like for example, one of the, the acrobat can jump and I will, if it's too like there, it will be flaming or it will be like kind of odd. So I will have to wait, but I still have to know his movement for if he will stand up or if will, you know, stuff like that. Mm. It's not like circular shoot and you know, it's not like that. It's like you have to be musical with the song yeah. and keep that thing going without yeah. the public notice it. Uh, so. I'm going to jump into a quick question, yeah, and then sure. I want to ask you about uh, some grace notes that you played in that last song, which I thought would be a good uh, yeah, little sure. lesson for us to get into with the Let's people. Um, those of you who are watching us on Facebook, um, you can join us on drumchannel.com. Uh, go to beta.drumchannel.com. That's the brand new site. You'll be able to check out everything we have. And the members on Drum Channel have known this has been coming up, so we gave them the opportunity to ask some questions in advance, or you can get into the chat tonight. And one, which is exactly what we're talking about, um, do the horses take cues from you or do you take cues from the horses? This is obviously somebody who's seen the show. Uh, <laughs> how does that work? Well, we, we mostly follow what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. It's mostly. not musical cues that makes them move so no, much. No, of course not. Yeah, we, no. we have, well, like, like we were talking about when they decide to jump or like the, the momentum, Eric has to punch everything like with the action on stage. The same thing with me, I build intensity with the, the, the way the horses move, the acrobats, how they, how they react and all this. So now we're, we're following the stage, but we make it seem like if they were following us. That's the magic exactly. of the thing. You, yeah. it, it certainly felt like that when yeah. I watched the show. Um, play the grace note thing that you did in the middle of that song, and, and how important are grace notes to you, and how are you achieving that? The ghost note? The ghost note, yeah. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I always like um, to try to play low volume, uh, and people will laugh at home because I was playing hard sometimes, but I mean, just I'm just saying like in that part, I like it very, very soft. So the ghost note create that kind of um, tension. So I decided to make the emphasis on the hi-hat and the snare. The kick, it's more like a collar, like as like a, a drum and bass kick, a 808 or something like that. But I'm trying to move that kick around. So usually, I try to be very like, you see, it's very sensitive. So I, w I, al I started with something, when I created, I started with something like, like just single stroke. It's just, just single stroke. And I, I do the accent. So this is the basic start for the people who wants to try. Start with a single stroke instead to do like, you do. Or you can even stop. This is the kind of basic of the groove. Um, from there, I wanted something a little bit uh, more intense. So I like to play with the opening of the ayat. So I, I, I like to open it just a little for create that tension. So I was playing around. That was my starting point. So from there, I was like, okay, now I need to groove that. So I was listening like the, 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 the song of Louis, and it's very funky. So, but funky, but like lay back. So. So the kick is still not there. So, and from there, I'm like, well, I can do that. 
It's, everybody see that before. So I'm like, okay, I will try to go drum and bass-ish in the area. And from there, I started the, the pattern. So I always like to start my pattern I add kick snare for whatever I do. Um, and I need to nail those in the slow motion. And you can play around and... Important to, to talk about, I think, as far as tone colors go, you have a little towel on the snare drum, which is just dampening that a little bit. Um, Can buy the, that at Drum Channel. For the yeah, Drum Channel <laughs> yep. towel, right? Yeah, our special. <laughs> um, and um, on the show, you actually have over to that side, not a snare drum. You have a uh, different percussion instrument. Oh yeah, on the, the show, show. I am, I'm using like a, a derbaki, and uh, I have like a piccolo tom from DW. And uh, actually, I, I feel like weird because I'm I'm playing since six years with like a percussion here, and today I'm like. Where's that? So <laughs> it's in my environment, it's different. But I like those piccolo tone because I can change the skin, put like whatever, like different skin and tone and tune it up and uh, I can get like a, another percussion. Because at the beginning I had like a bigger percussion and I was not able to fit it with the kit. And, uh, but with that was, per yeah. And, I, and before I had a computer here with a lot of sequences, but I realized like it doesn't, uh, yeah, we put all, it's better organic. Look, like the sequence are there for coloring but if you want like create more tension and it's more interesting for the public, the real instrument are still the best. Also, if you're studying and you're practicing this specific beat, uh, you're getting two different tone colors on the hi-hat. You're playing with the tip and the butt to play that pattern. Oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can. Slow that down a little bit just so the young students can see how you're combining the two different, how you're getting those two different sounds like here? on the hi-hat. Yeah. I will do like very, just a high hat and a snare. This is, I, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it's the idea. to point out that the louder accent on the hi-hat is not just hitting it harder, it's the fact that you're hitting it with the shank of the stick. Exactly. I always like to do that, um, to groove the same rhythm everybody are used to here, but just put the accent at the right place. It will change everything. You know, like just, like just to do like... It's, it's only an accent and it's, it's completely new beat. Um, again, another question that came in uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, how big is the band? What size band is it when you're actually we're, playing? We're five musicians. Uh, singer, drum, the bass is the musical director, we play on violin, and a guitar, uh, guitarist, guitar player. And it's live music throughout. It's live music all the time. Yeah. 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 Which is phenomenal. So many shows are cutting back in that area and it adds so much to it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a fun gig. I mean, uh, some people like told me, how you can do that? Or get me? Well, it's not just that. I mean, we, I turn out like with this show, I think I'm uh, past 1,600 with the first show, like uh, eight, seven, 800. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the show has two, the company has two shows. And, uh, but with my personal other career, I have other bands and I, didn't, I think I did like 6,000 shows in my life, like right now. And uh, I still keep the flame and the fire because I am always try to uh, involve myself and work on me. And I cannot say, okay, I'm done. Like if you have the best thing to do, the, the people like uh, right now is invest your money in teaching. Like, I mean, getting classes, lessons. Uh, you can get the most gear as you can. I'm, I'm, I'm freak on cymbals and snare. People know, know me for that. But I will, I have a bachelor degree and I have a college and thanks for my family to help me out to, 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 with that. Uh, but I still took a lot of lessons private lessons and I have no regrets. Mm -hmm. I mean, like now the cool thing for like DC, for example, like people can uh, be in Japan and like uh, look at uh, what are you doing here, you know? Well, how important it is 
for students to learn how important it is to learn, uh, which it's might sound uh, like a crazy thing to say. But um, you play, you know, what you play in the show, when you see the show and you see Eric up there uh, in the 10th floor, um, is what you need to play for the show. Um, what you're going to see him play, which he did earlier today here for us, because we had a couple of secrets of the pros that we did, check those out also, um, was, you know, a whole different Eric that you wouldn't think maybe was <coughs> the same guy that you saw up there on the 10th floor, you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, the same thing with you. Uh, these guys really That's can good point. rip and play all different styles of music. You're bringing a very good point uh, about versatility. And, mm. um, of course, like, I mean, I'm not like... Um, I like to be able to play almost everything. To play everything, it's impossible. But I mean, to play almost everything and, and sounding in the style. And, uh, and if you want a gig and if you want to work the most as you can, is to play the most rhythm as you can. I can chop like, and I can do crazy feel, but, I'll, but when I am with a band in a music situation, I will always put myself back and I will let the music talk. This is the most important thing. Usually, this is what I do. Um, of course, if we just jam together and we have fun, it's something else. But for a context of working, um, is the way I see the music. Uh, I'd like to have you break down a 7-8 piece, which actually this is from the show, correct? No. Uh, yep. song that you have in the show. Um, you could play it a little bit, but first, if you came in a little bit late um, and you didn't see the pre-roll to this show, um, we have a video. Uh, it's just a really short little snippet of what life is like uh, with Eric every night practically uh, when he's playing Cavalia. Uh, just roll that, check it out for a minute, and then we'll come back and have him play part of one of the tracks from uh, the actual show. It's a 90-minute show, is it? Uh, it's a two-hour show. Two-hour show, yeah, with a break in between. And sometimes two shows in a day. Uh, yeah, yes. And I think you get the clue when you're watching this show. It's unlike uh, any other show that a drummer would normally play because it is going to change all the time based on what's happening down there for you. Uh, and a seven, you know, getting into something a little yep. bit more sophisticated. If you could just play a little bit of... Uh, of this track, this is one of the songs from from the show. Yep, it's a it's a it's a rip part like a little short. Let's on fait juste beta, ou on fait les deux. On fait les deux. Prêt? Prêt. Thanks. Cool. Now, break down a little bit well, the, the actual groove pattern that you're playing. Um, could you show us a little bit how you put that together? Yeah, but we'll actually, what, where you, you ask me what I have like for percussion. Mm -hmm. Usually I have a derbaki or okay. like a dumbek here. So I, now I convert this nice the side snare for that. Um, I wanted like a pattern like a... <laughs> like a very like percussion, but like oriental kind of way. So I could have done that in the ghost note on my snare, but I wanted to keep that. So what I did, it's like a, it's a 7-4 pattern. This is slower 
than it should be, but uh, it gives you an idea. I could have done, like I said, and keep going on the snare. But with that, it makes very different what is the snare and what is the percussion on, in, in the rhythm. And putting that together, when, when you hear that, when you hear him doing that, how is that affecting what you're doing? Because you guys improvise a lot back and forth. Well, I would say during this part, uh, this part is pretty written down like solid. But after that, like in, in this same number, I would say, uh, like it's, it's a jumping number. So like horses are jumping everywhere around. There's people on stilters doing flips. Uh, we have like um, West African guys doing tumbling. So there's a lot going on. So somebody f fall down the horse or like there's like a technical problem on stage. Well, then we'll like really put down the intensity in the music and then create a suspense. And that's when me and Eric like will communicate together, but like really just by listening to each other. And then Eric most of the time will, will like keep, keep the beat like, like low, but still busy to create that suspenseful kind of feel. And then I will, I will come in and, and then we'll, we'll build the intensity together. So that's why like the, I, in this situation that happens Quite often, we need to be like really focused and really listen to each other, so we can create like the feel, like you said earlier, that like this was actually part of the show and not like an accident going on <laughs> on stage. Yeah, so that's what we. That's what. That's why we're there actually, to make everything seems like it was meant to be. Yeah. And don't forget, it's a seven-four rhythm. So yeah. Sometimes this is the. He can move the time. Uh, and the guitar player can move the time, mm. but we need to be back on the one after like four bars or eight bars. So this is another challenge. So if one night something is going something different and they want to follow exactly what's going on, they won't keep in seven, four. I will, but then they will still be going outside. So um, it's, it's a, it's a, you need to keep your focus because if not, you can get out. Uh, it sounds so much like a pulse that you can dance to, though. That's the beautiful part of mm. being able to be, you know, a musical musician like you are. And, and be dancing on 7-4 is different. It's like, I make a samba in 7-4. I did, but it's, <laughs> it's kind of... But it doesn't feel normal. that way when you're playing it. That's the, that's the beautiful, beautiful because we part want, of Because we want the people can groove. They can like. They, can, they will like that kind of rhythm because, like, one person, if we read two shows, would be a drummer, like a musician. That's a 7 4 song, huh? you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, <clears throat> nobody else. The girl selling flour in the corner of the street, she doesn't matter. You what know? about the tom part of that? That was really cool. Yeah, so the tom part, like, well, the same thing. Um, I wanted to keep still, like, still keeping like that kind of a uh, world beat approach. So I used, I, I decided to use the drum, the tom, like, as uh, a dun dun or like some, like, African percussion or Arabish percussion. Um, even if there are drums, I mean, their drum itself, I need to make them sounds a bit more like, uh, like a movie soundtrack. So what we did is like, I, I, I needed to follow him and um, not just him, I mean the sequence, like I mean the, all the musician. So if I would have played something too busy, it won't be good. So that, that's what you said, like you can dance. So I wanted something we can dance on it. So I decided to do like five, six, seven. <laughs> And, and usually I change a bit because I always do that pattern when the people are moving stuff on stage or they're jumping. So I will hit different symbols. Or I will make different feel, but still keeping that, that kind of feel. Yeah, there's parts of the show where I could tell you're looking to open up a little bit because this is like, it's a pending drum solo almost, but you still have to keep <laughs> the pattern going, but you're ready to get into it. Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> ready to jump in the pattern. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely. Uh, as, as you go forward um, with both of your careers, um, other things that you're doing besides the show, uh, tell people what projects you have. Right. Go ahead. Um, uh, well, we, we we're currently working on some, uh, some music together. So, uh, well, I would say the, the most important thing uh, when, when you're a touring musician is keep yourself like entertained outside of the work because the, the work is kind of, uh, uh, even if the shows are, always different. We're still playing kind of the same music every night. So you need to have your own project to, uh, 
to keep enjoying playing music. So this is the most important thing to, to remember. So I, I compose a lot of music. I, I just finished a course of uh, composition for film and TV. And uh, Eric is always uh, my like uh, my helper. I always ask him <coughs> to record some percussion, drums track for me. And lately we started a kind of like old school rock project. And uh, there's going to be some songs coming out yeah, soon. Yeah, something we have like an LP, like a Louis Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> LP, <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, to, to, yeah, kind of rock. I think that people are going to like it. So how did you get the gig? That's an interesting question well, a lot of people would want to know. A different story completely because I, I was working um, back in the days with, like, uh, with Michel Cusson, the composer. Uh, he was uh, doing a lot of TV soundtrack and, um, and I was drumming for him uh, and playing percussion on many television shows. And, um, and one day uh, he's like, uh, I think uh, I can have a gig for you, but it was not for this one, it was the first show. And I'm like, what you're talking about? I was like, so he started to tell me like, there's a big company. Actually, the name of the company was not there yet. So, so he introduced me with the, the team, and I, I started that. So I did like a few, four years with them. And uh, I just say, oh, it's kind of same. I got a call from him. It's like, well, they start their second show. You want to be part of it? It's like, a, so it was straight like that. No, I mean, he know me, so he knew me since like '99. So I did a. I did that like right away, so it was pretty cool for for him. I think he got in, uh, introduced by the other violin player. Yeah, I was uh, I was a classical musician before, so I used to play in symphony orchestra. Uh, I was studying classical violin in uh, universe, uh, Montreal University, and uh, the the violinist that was doing the gig just before me, uh, we played together in orchestra. And uh, he knew that I, w I was kind of a, well, the most important thing for this gig is to be able to improvise. There's not that much violinist that, that master like improvising and in like a lot of different style. So uh, he thought about me because he knew uh, I really like to play different type of music uh, outside classical music. And then I auditioned, I met uh, Michel, the composer, and finally I got the gig. It's good to keep ourselves uh, busy like in <clears throat> whatever project it is, like for the people back home, like try to connect yourself, go out there, uh, play with people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, play uh, with different bands, different singer, different style. Uh, don't try to keep on, bam, you can keep yourself in one niche, one kind of like a style. It's okay, I mean, but I mean, it, de it depends. If you can live with that, super. But on my side, I needed to try different things. Um, and um, now I'm, I'm, I'm touching wood, but I'm very lucky because I can do that show during the uh, at night. During the day, I'm uh, working for the casting for a, a com percussion company called Sama Jam in, in Canada. Um, I do a lot of recording too, session studio. And um, since like a year, I, I'm kind of I like to keep myself a bit underground. I don't like to be too much like all the time there. Uh, but I, I restart to do drum clinics now. So uh, mm -hmm. I did like a series of like I remember like seven or eight in Canada with Long and McCoy. Um, and now I will try. I did a few in, in one in San Jose, in California, last year. So I try to to put myself back. But it's I, I swear, like with all the show we have here and my other job, uh, the casting job, it's very hard to uh, have time for many projects. It's a uh, mm. all my my session gigs. I did those like more in between 2006 to 2011 when I was working here at the Sound City Studio. I'm afraid Eric Boudreau's name is not going to be. Uh so much under the table anymore because a lot of people are gonna, are gonna oh, well. be finding out about your talent. Both of you are so, <laughs> thank are you. so talented. Thank you, man. Uh, and I can't thank you enough for coming by. I know this is one of your few, they go how many days in a row sometimes? Uh, six, it depends. 16 days. Uh, 15, 16, 16 shows days in, in a row days, sometimes, yeah. yeah. They have their, their day off here and they come and it's not a day off because they, we worked them much <laughs> longer than they did if they were doing yeah. a show. Uh, Got some great Secrets of the Pros lessons and other performances, which we'll have as bonus performances. And um, let's close out. Talk about this uh, this last song that you're going to do. Tell us a little bit about well, it. Well, uh, I'm going to start with an uh, open drum solo. Um, and on my cue, uh, we will start a sequence. And uh, it's a two-part song. Uh, it's the, Those songs are coming from uh, Eric Claire, my friend. Um, and um, yeah, it's like a one. One part is more like an Arabish song, and the other part, the other one is more groovy. So I uh, will try to uh, play with that. So uh, great.
Yeah. I, and I thank you so much. Thank you for your invitation. Uh, this has been this is fantastic. It's great to be thank here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it was my great. fourth time, I guess. This here? is this is this is another who all knew Eric that you haven't heard maybe so much before. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. It's very good to you uh, to uh, for the invitation and just to let the, the people know here it's very close for the fire in uh, for uh, the Thomas fire is just right here and it's still still going like you're still doing your job and and, and this is. Is very uh, good. I mean, you're still you're not stopping your life for that. And some people have like very bad situation. I just want to say, um, thank you for the invitation, even with this uh, situation. Sure, around. absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're all pulling together to get get through this, as you as you know. Uh, and when true. you have a chance, you've got to go see the show, Cavalia. Uh, check it out. It's here in LA right now. It's going to Scottsdale. And, and then Stop. it's going to Winnipeg. Winnipeg, okay. And then they have some big surprises coming after that. So uh, yeah, if, you're, we'll if you're watching us uh, on demand here, uh, just go online and check it out, and you'll see where yeah, they are. Yeah, can go. We have Instagram and Facebook. Uh, come. We, 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 yeah, the people can ask us questions or be our friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, man, guys. Yeah, thank you.